Hello, welcome to our Lead Green Associate Examination Preparation Course, Lead Green Associate Made Easy. My name is Bazi Ahmed. I am the author of the course. I am a mechanical engineer, graduated from Bharati Dasan University, India in the year 1999. In 2002, I have completed my Masters in Mechanical Engineering, specialized in Heat Power Engineering from Birla Institute of Technology, Ranchi, India. From 2002 to 2006, I was into academics. Specifically, I was teaching refrigeration and air conditioning, heat and mass transfer, thermal engineering, and computational fluid dynamics. From 2006 onwards, I am into construction sector. Specifically, I am into MEP contracting, energy audits, green building facilitation, and CFD simulation for buildings. In 2007, I got qualified as Certified Energy Manager and Energy Auditor from Bureau of Energy Efficiency under Ministry of Power, Government of India. In 2008, I got qualified as Lead AP. In 2010, I got upgraded to Lead AP BD plus C, that is Building Design and Construction. In 2011, I got qualified as Lead AP Operation Maintenance. Recently, in 2014, I got qualified as ASHRAE Certified Building Energy Assessment Professional. I started taking Lead Green Associate and Lead AP training courses from March 2010. In the last four years, I have trained more than 1,500 professionals. Get into the course now. The objective of the course is to help candidates become Lead Green Associate in next four to six weeks. I have been taking classes for more than four years. In my experience and observation, I found that candidates who took the examination immediately after the course passed the examination with least effort. So I strongly recommend you to keep a target of appearing for lead green associate examination within six weeks. The course content is divided into 12 chapters. In chapter one, we will discuss about green buildings and lead credentials. In Chapter 2 and Chapter 11, we will discuss about Lead Rating Systems and US Green Building Council. From Chapter 3 to Chapter 10, we will discuss about various Lead Credit Categories. Finally, in Chapter 12, we will discuss about Cost vs Benefit of Green Buildings. Let us start with the first chapter now, Introduction to Green Buildings and Lead Credentials. In this chapter, we will discuss what is a green building or what are the characteristics of green buildings, what is the significance of green buildings, what are the various green building rating systems, why lead, what are the various lead credentials and some information about lead examination. What is a green building or what are the characteristics of green buildings or what to expect out of a green building. Green buildings are energy efficient, they consume less energy compared to conventional buildings. Green buildings are water efficient. They consume less water compared to conventional buildings. Green buildings offer better indoor environment. Indoor environment includes thermal comfort, lighting comfort, air quality, acoustics. Green buildings use eco-friendly or sustainable materials compared to conventional buildings. Green buildings generate less waste during construction and operation. Green buildings have lesser transportation requirement compared to conventional buildings. Green buildings protect or restore habitat. Hence, the environmental impact of green buildings is much lesser than conventional buildings throughout the life cycle. What is the significance of green buildings? Why there is a lot of talk about green buildings in recent days. Buildings directly contribute to all major environmental issues like climate change, depletion of resources, ozone depletion, land pollution, water pollution, and air pollution. Green buildings use much less resource compared to conventional buildings and hence can be a part of the solution for these environmental issues. Can you guess which of the following have the highest contribution to greenhouse gas emissions? Industries, transportation or buildings? I have asked this question in many classes. The most frequent answer I used to get is industries or transportation. Let us see what is the reality. Buildings are the major contributors of greenhouse gas emissions. Buildings contribute to 43%, transportation 32% and industries 25%. There are many candidates from GCC countries. So let us look at some specific statistics related to these countries. The per capita CO2 emission is higher in GCC countries 
compared to developed countries like USA or UK or compared to developing and industrialized countries like India and Philippines. Per capita CO2 emission is the CO2 emission divided by mid-year population of the country. What can be the reasons for higher per capita CO2 emission in GCC countries? In my opinion, the reasons can be number one, climate. GCC countries have extremely hot and humid climatic condition, which requires cooling and dehumidification. Space cooling is energy intensive as compared to space heating. The second reason is the lack of public transportation facilities in these countries. The third reason, the per capita income in these countries are generally higher. Green buildings can be the solution for all major environmental issues. According to US Green Building Council, green buildings can reduce energy consumption up to 50%, can reduce water consumption up to 40%, can reduce solid waste generation up to 70% and hence the CO2 emission can be reduced up to 39%. We have discussed about what is a green building and what is the significance of green buildings. But how a building can be certified as green building? Buildings are certified as green buildings by various green building rating systems. Green building rating systems are tools which assess the building on various aspects like energy efficiency, water efficiency, materials used, location of site, etc. and certify the buildings if they qualify the preset criteria. There are number of green building rating systems across the world. To name a few, in Australia, Green Star is used as a green building rating system. Brazil, Aqua or Lead Brazil. Canada, Lead Canada or Green Globes. China, Green Building Evaluation Standard. Finland, Promise. Germany, DGNB. Hong Kong, HK Beam. India, Griha and Lead India. UAE, Estidama Peel Rating System. USA, Lead. We are going to discuss much about Lead later. UK, Bream, Taiwan, EWH, Qatar, GSAS. Most of the green building rating systems listed here are specific to a country. For example, Green Star certifies building only within Australia. Aqua certifies buildings only within Brazil. There are two rating systems which are considered to be international. Lead from US Green Building Council and Bream from UK. Bream is an acronym for Building Research Establishment environmental assessment method. It is the first green building rating system in the world. LEED is an acronym for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. The advantage of LEED or BREAM is that BREAM is originally developed for UK. In UK, the climate is cold and dry. Whereas in US, there are eight climatic zones ranging from hot humid conditions to cold dry conditions. So LEED can be adopted for any climatic conditions. Now the question is when there are number of green building rating systems why bother about lead? Why lead? To summarize lead have following advantages over other green building rating systems. Number one lead is an internationally recognized green building rating system. According to US Green Building Council lead is used in 135 countries across the world. Number two, it is already adopted in many countries like India, Brazil and Canada. And finally, LEED is very well recognized and accepted in the GCC construction market. I have to mention this specifically because GCC is the most happening place in construction market. There are more than 750 LEED registered projects and 180 LEED certified projects across GCC. LEED registered projects or projects which has expressed their interest to be certified by filling an online application form. Registered projects are analogous to candidates who have just applied for an examination. LEED certified projects are the projects which are successfully assessed and got certified. Certified projects are analogous to candidates who have successfully passed the examination. As professionals, what LEED credentials you can earn? There are three levels of LEED credentials. The first level is LEED Green Associate. The second level is LEED AP. It comes with a specialty. The third level is LEED AP Fellow. LEED AP specialty can be selected based on your profession or career plan. Most construction professionals go for LEED AP BD plus E that is Building Design and Construction. 
Interior designers can go for lead AP ID plus C that is interior design and construction. Facility managers and facility engineers can go for lead AP O plus M that is operation maintenance. Urban planners can go for lead AP ND that is neighborhood development. If you are specifically into residential sector, you can go for lead AP homes. I have two specialties lead AP BD plus C and lead AP O plus M. Lead Fellow is awarded to lead APs who have demonstrated exceptional and significant contribution towards green buildings and lead. I would like to emphasize the point that US Green Building Council uses the term certification for buildings and credentials for professionals. So Lead Green Associate, Lead AP and Lead Fellow are called as professionals and not certifications. The LEED curriculum is divided into three levels of knowledge, 100, 200 and 300. 100 refers to awareness, 200 refers to understanding and 300 refers to implementation. After completing the first two chapters of this course, you will have a basic awareness of what is green building and what is LEED. So you will have a knowledge level of 100. After completing this course and passing LEED Green Associate examination, you will have an understanding of concepts and strategies in lead and green buildings. So you will have a knowledge level of 200. After passing the lead AP specialty examination, you will be able to implement the concepts and strategies in a project. So you will have a knowledge level of 300. To be recognized in the construction market, you should target to become a lead AP. Lead green associate is the first step towards lead credentials. Let us discuss about lead green associate examination who can appear for lead green associate examination there is no specific eligibility requirement set by us green building council except that the candidate should be at least 18 years lead credentials are appropriate for architects civil engineers building service engineers facility engineers facility managers developers or students in any of the above disciplines in conclusion Lead credentials are appropriate for any building professional who wish to take their career ahead. How much lead green associate examination will cost you? The exam fee is $200 for members and $250 for non-members. Full-time employees of US Green Building Council member companies are considered to be members and they can avail the discount of $50. How to apply for lead examinations and where can you take the examination? You can apply for examination through US Green Building Council website usgbc.org. We will upload another video detailing the application and scheduling of lead examinations. Examination can be taken through Prometric exam centers. Prometric exam centers are available all over the world. Some more details about the examination. It is a computer based examination with 100 multiple choice multiple response questions. Multiple response questions may have more than one answers. The total examination duration is 2 hours and 20 minutes. The first 10 minutes will be a tutorial on the examination interface. The next 2 hours will be the actual examination and the last 10 minutes will be exit survey. The first 10 minutes tutorial and the last 10 minutes exit survey are optional. The exit survey will get your feedback about the Prometric exam center. The passing score is 170 out of 200. It is not equivalent to 85%. Each question carry different weightage. Difficult questions carry more weightage and easy questions may carry less weightage. The assessment is based on your performance against a baseline performance. There is no negative marking, so you have to attend all the questions. The results are immediately available after the examination. Once you click the submit button, you can see the result in the monitor and the Prometric staff will be able to give a printout of your scorecard. From our experience, if you score 70% in all knowledge areas in the examination, you can pass the examination. In order to score 70% in the actual examination, you will have to score at least 80% in our sample examinations. The examination interface may appear something similar to what you see in the screen. It may not be exactly same as in the screen, but the features may be something similar to this. You can see the title of the examination, the question number, timer, and there are some navigation buttons. Next and previous are used to navigate between questions. Question 1 to 2, 3 to 4, 5 to 6, and so on. There is a calculator. If you click this button, a calculator will pop up. But for lead green associate examination, 
calculator is not required. Mark button is used to mark a question for reviewing it later. For example, if I have a doubt in question number 15, uh, what I will do is I'll, I will answer the question and then mark it for review. Here is the question and the choices. If there is more than one answer, you will be explicitly asked to choose two or choose three. If there is only one answer, nothing will be mentioned. If you click the button review, a screen something similar to this will appear. It will basically list out all the questions in the examination, whether it is completed or not not completed or if it is marked. So if your particular question is marked, you can double click on that question and then you can change the answer. You can change the answer until the end of the examination. What are the study resources available for the examination? All our study resources are uploaded in our website greenbuildingacademy.co. It is not com, it is co. And then follow the, the menu courses lead green associate version 4. All the study materials are uploaded here. Just scroll down, you can see the table of contents, you can see the preface, author's profile, instruction for the candidates, then chapter 1 to chapter 12. For each of our chapter, you will have the recorded video lectures, you can download the audio lectures, you can practice question and answers, you can download the, the presentation in PDF and PPS format. Here is the online version of the study guide and there is a discussion forum. The discussion forum uh, can be used to clarify your questions. At any point of time, if you have any questions, just put your questions in the forum uh, to the corresponding chapter and we will be happy to answer it. You can also download the study guide, PDF version of study guide from this link. Our study materials are used by more than 3000 professionals from all over the world and we have received very good feedback in the past. Uh, there is an option to take lead green associate and lead AP examinations together. The examination is conducted in two parts, four hours. Part one is the lead green associate examination and part two is the lead AP specialty examination. The examination fee is $400 for members and $550 for non-members. As usual, you can apply for the examination through usgbc.org. Each part has 100 multiple choice, multiple response questions. The total examination duration is 4 hours and 20 minutes. The first 10 minutes will be a tutorial on the interface. The 4 hours is the actual examination. The last 10 minutes is a exit survey. The passing score is 170 out of 200 for both part 1 and part 2. If you pass part 1 and fail in part 2, you can be a lead green associate. We generally do not recommend the combined examination for working professionals. To summarize, in this chapter we discussed what is a green building, what is the significance of green buildings, what are the various green building rating systems, what is lead and why it is important to us, what are the various lead credentials and finally we discussed some examination information. Thank you very much for listening to us. If you have any questions, please ask them in the forum section.